Tony is hungry, so I was like, hmm, what am I going to cook? So I decided we would do some chicken and dumplings. I don't do biscuit dumplings, and I am using a whole chicken, and well, let me just show you. I have got my, I don't know, it's probably a quart pan here, and I'm going to fill it up with water, and then I'm going to get my chicken out of the refrigerator wherever it is. Where's your chicken? No, no, no. Put it away. <laughs> All right, got my chicken. I let it thaw in, in the refrigerator. I'm gonna take it out of the paper, uh, rinse it off, and then we're gonna put it in the pan and we'll put it on the stove on high heat and we will let the chicken boil until the meat um, actually comes off the bone really easy. That's how you know it's done. And then uh, after that, I'll show you the next step. So let's get our water in here. And I'm gonna put about probably, uh, fill it up about three quarters of the way with water. So we got our water done. So we're gonna take the pan here and put it over here behind us on the stove and then to rinse the chicken I'm going to use cold water let me get this down here where y'all can see there we go all right so we're gonna take our chicken take it out of the package and yeah I guess you don't really have to rinse it I just like to rinse my chicken before I boil it so we just uh, open the legs there and put the water in the cavity. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm putting the water inside the cavity here, opening the wings and the legs, and just kind of rub it. And that gets any of the, the blood that might be on there, get that off of there. And I'm gonna rinse my bowl here, put the chicken back in the bowl. And then we will uh, go and put this chicken in the pot over there. So I got the chicken and I'm just gonna drop it in the water and let it boil. So let me go ahead and rinse my hands. Okay, I got my hands rinsed. And I'm going to, whoops, take my little handy dandy thingy here, turn on the burner light the oven or the stove put that back on there and like I said it'll take a couple couple hours for that to boil and get done but as you can see the chicken is in there and I will be back in a couple hours and I will show you how to debone the chicken and get it ready for the dumplings so I will see you guys in a little while okay guys it's been a little while let's go check on our chicken and see how it's doing all right as you can see it has started boiling and got the foam there it is not coming off the bone yet so it needs to continue to boil for a while so we will let it boil some more and then we'll get a fork and uh, try to take the meat off the bone Okay guys, I know you don't know it, but uh, I didn't show you the clock, but that chicken has been boiling for a while and it is starting to get pretty warm in this house from the heat. So let's check on it and see how, uh, how ready it is to come off the bones. I may go ahead and let it cool down a little bit and then just pick it off the bones after it cools down with my fingers. I don't know, let's, uh, let's look at it and then I'll decide. Okay, as you can see, it is still a boiling. And I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and not burn myself and see how easy this is going to come off here. If it was real done, then you could just barely pull on the meat. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but see. See if I can turn that around. It's really hard because it's hot and I'm trying to hold this. But see how that meat is coming off that bone? Really easy. 
um, that's what you want. Uh, if you pull on the, I should have my prongs, but I don't. If you pull on that bone, it would come loose from the other bones. But I'm going to say it is, uh, there, see? See how that's just peeling away? That means it's pretty much, that chicken is pretty much done. See how that bone just pulled off out of there? So I am going to uh, turn this burner off, let that cool down a little bit, and then I'll take the chicken out of there, set it on uh, a cutting board or a bigger bowl uh, or something, and I will um, <clears throat> uh, peel the meat off of the bones, and then um, you take the bones and you can do whatever you want to with them. I usually set them aside and my husband takes off the meat that I miss. Mm. <laughs> um, but then you put all the meat back in the water and, well, I'll show you. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's let that cool and it'll take a good half an hour before it cools enough where I don't burn the crap out of my fingers. So uh, give me about a half hour and we'll come back and do the next step. Okay guys, I'm going to uh, go ahead and take this chicken out of this pot and uh, as I take it out, see how the meat's just coming right off the bones? That's a good thing, that means it's done. And that means when it cools, it will be a lot easier. See how that's just pretty much bone there, the meat just came right off. When it cools, it'll be really easy to get the meat off of the bone. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this out of here without burning my fingers. But anyway, this is the bowl and I'm trying to find the cavity. I'm going to have to do, probably make a big mess here, but I'm good at making messes. That's part of cooking, I guess. So, oops, let's see. It just tore in half as I picked it up. Throw that one in the bowl. And all the juice you want to leave in there because that's your flavor. And you're going to add uh, just add your meat to that and then you'll add your dumplings to that and your seasoning <laughs> if I can get this piece of chicken out of here I'm having technical difficulty that smells good <laughs> I'm glad it smells good baby you may not need it tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so all right I got it teasing. I'll let some of that water drip oh. off of there throw that in the bowl and Got another little wing here. And I think that's about it. Um, there might be another bone or two in there. Yep, there is. So, let's see if I can feel any other bone. I don't feel any, so that's probably it. But anyway, uh, like I said, I'm going to let that cool just a little bit. Let this cool. And I will... Uh, Take the meat off the bones, put the meat back in there, and then we will add the dumplings. So, um, I'm going to give it about a half an hour. So, I'll be back in about a half an hour, and we'll go ahead to the next step. I don't know what step it is, but it's the next step. <laughs> okay, guys, let's see here. This is cooled off enough that I'm taking the chicken off of the bones, and I'm just dropping it back in the pot that has the boiled chicken broth water in it. I'm going to get me another little bowl here, set it over here, put the bones in. So it comes apart really easy and look how easy that just comes right off the bone. Look at that. Very little work at all. You can just drop it back in that bowl that your uh, chicken's in if you want to and then put it all in there at once. But just peel that off the bone until you got the bone like that. Like I said, I'll throw my bones over there because my husband will <laughs> my husband will gnaw on them before they get thrown away or out to the dogs or whatever we do it decide to do with them. Oh no. He'll gnaw on them <laughs> until there's nothing left. <laughs> about that. But, yeah. And altogether this uh so far it's been about three hours, so this is not a quick, easy meal. But it's this good. is <laughs> he said it's good. This is one of those meals that takes time, but it is well worth it. So um, 
I would pause you, but I have chicken all over my hands, as you can see. So, uh, my phone's waterproof. I could wash it off, but... Not greaseproof. <laughs> not greaseproof, true. But, uh, it'll just take a few minutes to get this uh, meat off the bones. And, uh, good thing about chicken and dumplings is my husband loves the dumplings. And we always have extra broth with chicken in it but we always seem to run out of dumplings so the great thing about this the way I do it is you can always make more dumplings and warm it up add to it and you got another meal for two three days <laughs> usually after two three days I'm like that's enough I've had enough Not me. <laughs> so what you can do just another suggestion is take your leftovers put it in a freezer bag or a bowl that is uh, you can put in the freezer and you can freeze it and then if you decide you want chicken and dumplings you just pull it out of the freezer and it's a lot quicker and it's just as good so or you could cook it for me or you can cook it for <laughs> four or five days until you run out whatever <laughs> uh, what I used to do when the kids were still home and we had the wood stove I would leave it on the wood stove and leave it warm and just add dumplings to it and oh still a little bit warm there and uh, we would eat it for till it was gone uh, I just kept adding dumplings to it and uh, occasionally I might have to that's still a little bit hot occasionally I might have to add a little more juice but all you do is uh, add hot water to your juice add a little more salt and pepper or if you have a can of chicken broth you can dump that in there but chicken and dumplings are just one of those things that I can't eat enough of. <laughs> you can't do enough of <laughs> that you can just keep adding to and they're just eating. good yeah they're they're just good my husband doesn't like a whole lot of chicken and dumpling different kinds of tip chicken and dumpling no but he does like mine yes so i'm the best chicken and dumpling maker in the world you come <laughs> second girl. i come second he yeah, says that's right there's no reason he, i like yours You're right he there actually home. makes his dumplings uh he'll roll them out and knead them and oh, yeah. uh it takes him a long time to do his dumplings that's because mine are good <laughs> that's because they're homemade everything homemade is better that's right but we have all right we have pretty much got all the chicken off the bones let me go through here and I'm just going to make this chicken into smaller chunks here now you can if you want to put it on your put it on your cutting board and cut it and make it bite size but I'm just spreading it apart and you can leave the skin in there. The skin ain't gonna hurt nothing. It's just gonna add more flavor. And just go through here and check for little bones and the bigger pieces. And that's it. We're ready to put this back in the water and uh, start making the dumplings. So let me uh, rinse my fingers here. And grab a hand towel. Alright, and then we will get this chicken here. Look at all that yummy chicken. Yum. Mm -hmm. And alright, so I'm going to take this and I try not to splash it too bad because I'm holding the phone with my other hand. But we got all that chicken in there. And the only thing else I need to do to this. Um, is add some salt, pepper, and my favorite, Lowry seasoning salt. How much do you put in there? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, the way I do it is right. Um, hang on, I gotta try to open the lid here with one hand. I got it, babe. So this is uh, try to get it so you can see. I just dump some in there. And then my pepper, same thing. Uh, got it. 
take the lid off and dump some in there. That was a lot. <laughs> no, it was not a lot. Okay. <laughs> you just don't watch me make chicken and dumplings. You just eat it. And then the salt, same thing. Take the lid off. And we go a little sparingly on the salt because of the Lowry seasoning salt. And then you just mix that up. And then we will taste it. Actually, it can use a little bit more salt. So we're going to take the salt and add just a little bit more. And then we'll stir it up and taste it again. So, here we go. That's better. All right, so now we have that part ready. So the next thing we're going to do is make the dumplings. So I'm going to uh, set you down, put the lids back on. My, no, I'm not putting the lids back because I need those. Okay, I'm going to get my handy dandy lighter out. And we're going to relight this burner and I'm going to put it on uh, probably about medium because that juice is already still hot. So we'll put it on medium low. Thank you, baby. He went and got me some flour. All right. For the dumplings, I'm going to start off with six cups of flour. So there's one, two, Three, four, and I don't have six in there. So just one second and we'll get a couple couple more cups of flour here. My honey's opening up for me. No, you just said get it. You didn't say yeah, that you put have it. In, that. <laughs> put it in here. Whatever. That'll cost you. <laughs> You're getting dumplings. What more do you want? More dumplings. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. All right. Oops. Uh, okay. All right. So we got the flour filled up. Thank you, darling. So we're gonna put two more cups of flour in there. One and two. So that is six cups of flour. And then what I do is I use two eggs per one cup of flour. So I have six cups of flour, so I'm going to use uh, 12 eggs. All right, guys, we had a uh, malfunction, I guess you could call it. Meyer setback. Meyer setback. We are taking out one, and we are taking out two. So that leaves us four cups of flour, because we're down to two chickens. We don't get that many eggs anymore. So, I have three, six, eight eggs. So, all those eggs are gonna go in that four cups of flour. <laughs> so, a little minor setback there, but let me put the flour away. Okay, got the flour put away. Now, the next thing I do is to my dry flour, I'm going to add floury seasoning salt again couldn't tell you how much I put in there. Uh, by looking at it, guessing, maybe two tablespoons, maybe? The salt, um, I don't know, about that much, however much that is. And then just sprinkle that in there. And then same thing with the pepper. What did I do with the pepper right here? Uh, I don't know, just sprinkle it. What, if it looks good, then that's good enough. <laughs> and then I'm going to make this or take this and mix all this up. Again, it's flour, flour seasoning salt, regular salt, and pepper. And then I just like to mix that up. And then I take my eight eggs. And then I'm going to take just a splash of milk. And 
and by a splash I mean a splash. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe a couple tablespoons. I don't know. And then I'm gonna get this out of my way because my kitchen's small and I don't have a lot of counter space, as you know. And then I'm going to just kind of mix these eggs up right here on the top. Just kind of beat them. And then I have got the best mixer ever invented. And I'm going to show you the best mixer ever invented for making my dumplings. Uh, as soon as I stir this up just a little bit, try not to make too big of a mess, but if I don't cook and make a big mess, then something's wrong. So there's always got to be a mess. Anyway, that is probably good enough. And let me go ahead and turn my water on because I will need it in just a few minutes. And here we go. So now make sure you don't have any rings on because if you do, that uh, mixture will get in your rings and it's really hard to clean your rings. So if you have jewelry on, you might want to take it off. But God blessed us with the best mixer we could have right here when it comes to making my dumplings. So you just get in there, pretend like it's Play-Doh and it's going to be really sticky, but that's okay. It's supposed to be. And by I mean real sticky, that's what I mean, real sticky. But that's all right, just keep mixing it up. And once you got all the flour and the eggs, everything mixed together, then you kind of try to scrape it off of your hands. That's why I turned the water on, because I'm going to have to rinse my hands as soon as I get what I can off of them. And it's going to be yellow from the eggs, but that's fine. That means you have good eggs. They're not store-bought. I guess it'd be yellow from store-bought eggs, too, but yeah. it won't taste the same. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. Okay, so we have our dumpling mix mixed up. And... I have it all over my hands, stuck to my hands, so that's good. That means it's the way it should be. Look at that, see? So, next thing you do is kind of try to scrape it off your hands the best you can. Get as much off as you can. Oop! <laughs> that one I think might have went flying. I'm not sure where that went. There we go. Alright, that's about the best I can get off my hands. So, as you can see, it's still on there some, but the rest of it I'm going to go ahead and wash off. And make sure your water is not really, really hot because, yeah, mine was too hot. I had to adjust it. So, and it does take a minute because, like I said, it is sticky. Alright, so we got that off my hands. Now let me rinse them off here. And then, the next thing we do is get a little fork. And just kind of flip it and stick it together. And then I'm going to have to turn you again so I can show you what I do. But let me show you. I get about this much and I put it on a fork. And then I take it to the mixture here. And I just scrape it on the side and drop it in there. And then after I get the dumplings in there, 
at all. All right, as long as the camera don't fall, then we might be okay. But I have my, my mix here. And again, you just do that. And I put it in there and then wipe it off because it comes off the fork easier. But once these dumplings are done, they will float. Uh, it takes about, oh, probably about 20 minutes before the dumplings are done. And uh, that's it. Um, again, all together, it has probably taken six, seven, eight, nine, about three and a half hours to boil the chicken, take the, ch the meat off the chicken bones, make the dumplings, let the dumplings cook, and uh, say grace and pig out. About three and a half, maybe four hours, depending on how long it takes to cook your chicken. How big your chicken is makes a difference, of course. But uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. And it is really, really, really good. My uh, grandma, this was her recipe. And my mom made these, makes these dumplings. And of course, now I make these dumplings. I eat them. And my husband loves them. <laughs> and uh, they are very good. So, uh, uh, if y'all want to try a bowl, come on over. And uh, we don't mind sharing. <laughs> <laughs> but you better hurry because he said he don't know how long they'll last. Right. Oh, his hot standing over the stove. No but anyway, that's how I make my chicken and dumplings. And uh, sometimes I'll make cheesy biscuits to go with them. However, tonight is not that night. <laughs> okay, guys, real quick, I wanted to show you what my dumplings look like when they are done. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. There we go. But they will float to the top, and that's what they will look like. And then into my belly. And then I'll turn the burner off and let them set for just a little bit because they're going to be way too hot to eat. And uh, then uh, all you got to do is put them in a bowl and eat and enjoy. So I will uh, have my taste tester taste them and let you know what he thinks. I did take one out and put it in a bowl and I'm going to cool it off and get my taste tester over here and uh, he can let you all know. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, not as good as mine, but yep, damn good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess they are husband approved. <laughs> So uh, I just want to say thanks again for watching, guys. Um, hope you learned something. Let me know if you try them. Uh, have any suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And uh, till next time, you all have a great night, and I'll catch you later. I'm going to eat me some dumplings. All right, bye.